Hello and thanks for tuning in. Uh, in this video, in fact I hope it's going to be a series of videos, we're going to be exploring Total Warhammer 2. Um, I appreciate that it's not a brand new game, I think it's been out since September last year. Um, I've just uh, recently bought it and absolutely fallen in love with it, so I thought I'd share my thoughts on it and hopefully show you a few hints and tips on uh, how to get better at the game as well. So. What is Total Warhammer 2? Well, for me, it's the perfect combination of uh, my childhood memories of playing tabletop games, uh, which I used to play right, probably out until the point uh, where I discovered girls and realised that they weren't really interested in sitting in stuffy rooms playing tabletop games and painting models. Uh, so sadly, I stopped. But now I'm a fat middle-aged old man, and that sort of thing doesn't matter. So I can in, uh, once again indulge my passions. It combines it with Total War, which um, if you've never played it before, is an absolutely fantastic game uh, massive massive campaign maps where you can set a fourth on world domination and also play massive battles involving hundreds and hundreds of individual troops um, civilians and units so that is uh, a very very brief description of what it's all about so the game is split in two uh, two main areas so we have the campaigns of which in Total Warhammer 2 there's a couple of different kinds um, you can even do a multiplayer campaign and also the online battles as well where you can play against other players using any of the factions within the game. So we're very going to very briefly just explore uh, these two things just for a couple of minutes each. So we're going to hoe ahead and we'll start a new campaign. So there's two uh, victory, two main victory conditions um, available in different campaigns within Total Warhammer 2. So we've got the Eye of the Vortex which we'll explore in a second. So within that um, there's a fight between several races which uh, who are all vying for control of so this magical vortex in the middle of the map. The aim is to complete a certain number of rituals, uh, which um, we'll show you a little bit more in a second. Five, if I remember rightly, uh, in order to win the game. Mortal Empires is more of a sort of a classic domination style game where the map is absolutely enormous if you've got total war hammer total war warhammer one and um, it'll combine both both the maps give you access to all the races available from both of the games making for an absolutely enormous um very very time consuming um game as well so we'll go ahead and we will launch I fight the for the greater good. so in here these are the races available there's some more as you can see for dlc so we've got high elves lizard men dark elves and skaven they're the only races that you can play in um, this eye of the vortex campaign so we're just going ahead and start with the dark elves and this badass here who's Tyrion. he's going to be our faction leader start the campaign fellow azure rally just get rid of that guy. Throughout the uh, game, certainly to begin with, you'll get up in this corner advisable pop-up just to give you an idea uh, of what to do because it's pretty daunting to begin with. And uh, this also there's loads of tutorials uh, pop up. So um, although it is quite daunting, Spies don't worry too much. The Here's the guy again. Just get rid of him. <clears throat> this is just a little mission that's just popped up. So throughout the game, you'll get sort of mini side missions. Here's telling us to what they're telling us to do. Go and capture um, a settlement belonging to these dudes here. So there's one here, which we'll show you. So very, very brief of the campaign map. So we'll just scroll out a little bit. So to start with, this sort of horseshoe shape here, this circular place is where we're going to begin. Over here um, will become available. Um, Dark Elves and Skaven will be living on here. And if I remember rightly, it's the lizard men down here. Um, the whole map, so all of this area won't be available in this game, in this campaign, but is in the Mortal Empires. Oops. Relations oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? There we go, so we'll zoom back in. So to start with, these are our guys with the white banner. We start with just one settlement here, Lothan, and the idea is to, well to begin with certainly, we're going to expand our territory, so we're going to show you taking one tower, um, at one settlement rather, um, in this video. So here's our first guy, our Two army, as you can see. Area. We'll click on his banner. This brings up the troops we have available in his army right now. So we've got a couple of spearmen, a couple of archers, a bolt thrower and a phoenix. So you can bolster your army. So at the moment we only have access to basic troops. So we'll go ahead and get a couple of those uh, selected. That'll take uh, a couple of turns to train them all. Within your settlements, if you select on it, so we've only we got the one at the moment. We can micromanage it, so we can uh, build buildings within it. 
and we can expand it and all the different buildings do lots of different things so we can build military buildings which give you access to better troops so for example if we were to build this one soon uh, it give us access to uh, slightly better archers and also a new kind of troop that we don't have access to some of the horse no surprise gives us access to cavalry this one here later on gives us access to uh, our bolt throwers and some chariots and then you have um, over this side things uh, sort of commerce and how, how to grow your settlements quicker uh, money is really important we're not really going to touch on that in this but needless to say you need a supply of money to fund all your armies and whatnot so we're just going to click on that to get it building so we will in later videos explore a bit more about settlement management so that is it for this turn that we're going to do let's fast forward this what i really want to do is just show you a battle as well which is uh, for me at least where the game really really shines we'll end the turn again because we needed two turns to get those troops recruited and then we're going to go ahead and take this settlement another interesting thing about the High Elves in here is a, a resource called Influence as well, which um, is quite is new. Um, in I think it's exclusive to the High Elves, so I haven't played all of the factions yet in the new game. Um, with Influence, you can well you can use it to influence the other factions, so you can um, make them more friendly towards you if the you want to make no them threat. less friendly towards you should you want to do that. But more importantly, you can um, change how they feel about each other. So if you're struggling with a particular faction, maybe you need help battering them into submission, you could Im uh, decrease their relations with one of your allies, encourage one of your allies to go to war with them. Um, or likewise, if someone's really, really battering you, you can spend influence um, to make them more likely to sign a peace treaty with you or a non-aggression pact. Um, I just will show you quickly diplomacy. So these are the races that we have um, that we're aware of at the moment. So these are all different high old dudes and then we've got the dark elves here at the moment. Lady of so different things that you can do with them. Far to petition the Phoenix throne. Well, we can request, so we can request military access to their lands, get a defensive alliance, military alliance, or joint confederation. Joint confederations is pretty cool. If you're really strong versus them, or they really like you, or scared of you, uh, they might just simply join your team, for one of the phrase, join your confederation. Um, these are all red, which means it's quite unlikely that they would go for it. To any of the above. How can I assist? What brings you to the Phoenix? Court? Yellow, however, more likely. Why Let's see if they will. So they accepted it. We'll say we're not going to explore all of that now. What I want to show you is a battle. Defender. So we're going to select our army. Oriah. Take the glittering tower. Seal. So here, very briefly, this is our army. This is the enemy army. As you can see, we've got loads of them. We're going to kick the stuffing out of them. If uh, it was slightly more even, uh, or there's a bigger army here, we could besiege the town. Me battle. If we were scared, we could run away. We could let the uh, game just automatically Sun resolve in hungers. this massively in our favour, which you can see here. The yellow bar is us. The, the will red rise bar is again. them. Or we could fight the battle. So we're just going to fight the battle. Okay, so here's the battlefield. Uh, this is a very, pretty bog standard one, really. Open field in the middle but they can be very very varied depending on they actually reflect the terrain of the campaign map so here we were in sort of a flat slightly wooded area that's reflected in the map if we're in the, in the mountains the map would reflect it um, you can have maps with rivers on uh, loads of hiding spots so you can hide troops in trees and whatnot but this is our army so I'm just going to get them organized I'll show you in a later video d different ways of organizing your army I'm just going to fly through this just quickly show you our guys. For so I must stress this is a very small army, our enemies even smaller. These are our guys though, so we've got some spearmen up at the front, Air some archers behind, Arian. our general who's denoted by this sort of star kind of shape here, let's have a proper look at him. There he is, stood by a bolt throw at the moment, that's Tyrion, he's our faction leader, he's badass. Got a bolt thrower and we've also got a phoenix, we'll show you, pretty cool, um, can drop bombs, looks like basically fiery bird shit, yeah, if I'm <laughs> pretty cool nonetheless, so um, we'll start the battle, as you can see our enemy is woefully outnumbered, this will be a very very easy battle, I'm going to show you the phoenix, I'll show you the phoenix fiery poo of death, see I've got, uh, these boys are already getting stuck in, 
don't follow the Phoenix. So what's pretty cool is you can, despite the sheer number of stuff going on, you can zoom in on individual troops, so you can really get a, a bird's eye view, pardon the fun, what's going on. And then we're going to drop some poo. Oh, we missed. So we'll fly back over. Lots of fun. These guys aren't happy. Why would you be big fairy bird poo falling all over you? Well, get over here. So, just to explain briefly what's going on to the enemy army is advancing on me. Different bars above him. Red one is their health bar. It's green on yours. And the bottom bar, the grey one, is their morale. Or their leadership level. If that drops low they will run away, so we'll focus all our fire on one unit and you'll see them run away. As you can see, their leadership's dropping, uh, or it's gone completely. Um, their banner was flashing, which means they're about to give up, and they are running away. There's different ways of winning a battle. You can, um, obviously, you can just kill everybody, um, but you don't always have to do that. Um, you can, um, for example, take out their general is a, a very good option. Take it out there, the enemy general. You give a massive um, leadership disadvantage to their army, uh, and their troops are, will be much more likely to run away. Once you've rounded everything, that's it. It is game over. So you'll see here in a second. I mean, we've we've already won this battle. Let's be honest. But we'll let it complete. Spearman, without fail. So we've got those wavering. Let's just get rid of my last punch. Oh, it looks like these guys have grown a pair. They're coming back to play. But we have broken the army completely and utterly. Now, I just want to say that is uh, by no means... Um, a real battle. Uh, well, it ob obviously it was a real battle, but um, they're not all going to be that easy. You will lose battles. Um, you will get absolutely overwhelmed by um, some factions. So that was High Elves versus some Dark Elves. Different factions play very differently. So later on in the game, High Elves are very infantry focused. Um, if you play against a Skaven, that is where you will just be facing hundreds and hundreds. You'll be massively outnumbered, um, but by mainly weak troops, um, with some big monsters in there. Um, we're not going to go through every single race, but every single race is very, very distinct play, uh, play, playable playability. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, very different characteristics in terms of how you will use them on the battlefield. Different strengths, different weaknesses. Um, we will, over time, explore each race and faction. But uh, that's for another day. So that is a a battle. So we're just going to um, oops, wrong one. We're just going to end that. So after every battle, it gives you a summary. So uh, there, we pretty much destroyed him. We had loads more people anyway, loads more troops. We only lost 35 men. They lost nearly 400. Fear the might of Alf One. Once you have defeated the army um, or the garrison that's in the settlement, different options in terms of how you can take them. So take we could just occupy, and we could loot and occupy, we could sack it, or we could raise, raise it, it to the, the ground. ground. Um, if you just occupy it, well, each option has different uh, outcomes. So we could just occupy it. Um, we're not going to get any extra gold for it, um, but we, it does make it easier in the long run to get the people here uh, to love you a bit more. So that's measured by public order. So here we'd get a minus 10 public order f for a one for one turn. Sleep with uh, one eye open. We would get minus three, which would gradually get better through different things within the game, which once again, we're not going to explore here. Um, if we take all their money and smash everything up, we get a minus 30. Um, if, Occupy in a nutshell, in public order, if it, it starts at zero, if it gets to minus 100, the population will rebel and uh, an enemy army will we have captured it. and they will try to take it back. So I've just chosen to occupy it.
The Drukis seek to get rid of this guy because he's going to tell us, which I'm going to show you is a small, well not small, makes a big difference, um, sort of RPG element to the game. Um, it with, is with your characters. So darkness. as your characters uh, progress and do stuff, um, you can give them skills. So we're going to go and have a look at Tyrion. So he's got one skill point here just from winning that battle. Uh, different ways we can upgrade him. So we could uh, different skill lines. So this bottom one here. Um, I will select Root March, it means he can move further in the campaign map. Um, but we will very, very quickly look at the others. So this bottom line is more how he will affect the campaign map. Um, this is leadership, so the rest of them, or this one, or not the rest, oh my god, can't get my words out. Uh, in here, this is how he can affect your army. So as you can see here, this that will give his um, leadership um, a buff here. Better defense for certain archers, that's obviously going to make your, um, sorry not for archers, uh, for a few different troops. Uh, Bowmaster, that's going to make your ranged guys better. Skymaster, so later on we'll have dragons and as you saw the phoenix, makes them stronger and so on for different kinds. This uh, skill line just makes him an absolute badass in battle, so it's all about buffing him himself uh, and so on and so forth. These two things here, um, different, uh, are, well some armor and a weapon we can a lot later on. Um, is quest related so some quite cool RPG elements in there as well so you can tailor them. Um, there's loads of different kinds of characters in there so you can have uh, obviously he's a, a a general but he's mainly focused on battle and improving the campaign but you can have wizards um, in there, wizards and mages um, and nobles who you can train and develop to be uh, they can be assassins, they can be people who can interfere with enemy armies. You can embed them in your armies um, to help out there, um, all the ways of uh, sabotaging enemy settlements. So that's a very brief taste anyway um, of that campaign. We'll just come out and we'll start a Mortal Empires one so you can see that. It's going to look <laughs> very, very similar. Mortal Empires though. We must preserve this world. As you can see now, loads more races available. So there's the High Elves and whatnot that we saw previously. But now we can also choose from the Empire, the Dwarves, the Bretonia, use this, Wood Elves, Orcs, all the Greenskin Driver, Vampire Counts. It's going to be Chaos. Yep, yeah. right, all the uh, Beastmen, and there's also some more DLC available. So loads more to choose from. And the victory conditions in this are different in that it's about domination. It's about taking over as much of the world as possible, either through battle or through uh, shrewd diplomacy, shall we say. So you could get them to join your confederation. Um, there's also an option as well. So we'll just get this to load. Glory to you, Prince Tyrion. Once again, we're going to skip all this. We'll explore those if we do an actual uh, proper campaign video. So as you can see, not very different at all. Um, similar starting area, although there's an island missing here. What is different in this one is all of this area of the map that in the um, other version of the campaign, the Vortex uh, one, wouldn't be available. So over here is where all your Dwarves and Empire are. Your green skins are going to live over here. Um, it's just my geography of the game. I can't quite remember where everybody lives, but this portion of the map is where all the other races uh, will live. We start off quite similarly. Um, all the um, ways different things work. Queen. And we start with something slightly different here in this campaign. We start with the same town. We start with similar enemies, and the aims here are, as I say, just to take over the world. Um, so that is a very, very brief um, look at Total War Warhammer 2. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's maybe inspired you to uh, maybe go out and buy it to try it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, so that's the campaign. Uh, we're going to have a very quick look at um, the online battles. So different options for battles. You can play all the different quest battles, um, which is kind of the RPG elements within there. So you could uh, go and play through those. Helps you practice for the main game. You can do a custom one against the AI, which, AI, which I'm going to do, or you can play against other people as well. So in the custom battle, 
So what's really good about these is you get to play all, you get to choose from all of the races available, not just the ones from the campaign. So it gives you an idea of how all the different um, races play, the strengths, the weaknesses helps you get a lot better. Uh, I'm just going to go with whatever it's given us here and start a battle. So it's chosen, put me up against the lizard men. Oh, could be giving him some more troops to be fair. I'm just going to pick some random ones. So we're not going to fight this battle, it's not about making it a proper battle in any way. So in here though, uh, just to give you an idea of what we're doing, is you start off with a pool of gold. Uh, each of your troops costs a certain amount of gold uh, if you want them in your army. So we've got 18 left there, we're just going to start the battle. So, similarly to what we saw before in the campaign, uh, here is a battle map. We will obey. Understood. Let's get my dudes uh, lined up. I can't remember for the life of me what I what I chose for them. Um, Defender of Alt One. Let's uh, get all the cavalry on one side. White Lion. Anyone who has played before, probably looking at the formation I've just set up there, be cringing. As I say, this isn't a uh, the idea here isn't sort of to show you how best to set up your armies or anything. And here's the enemy army, so a bit bigger than last time. So a great way here of um, just simply playing against the AI or Understood. other players if you wanted to. Understood. Orders received. Uh, to practice the game to get better. Because for me, where the game truly comes alive, I mean, the campaigns are absolutely fantastic. But there's, apt, there's nothing better for me than uh, beating another human player into smithereens, virtually speaking, obviously. We go without fail. It shall be done. Enemy army's not moving. Let's see what I did give them. Did I give them anything good? It's probably where I'll get battered, in the, even though I've given them a, uh, a random enemy army. Of Anarian. Anyway, while the, this is happening, um, within the uh, cam, uh, within these multiplayer battles, like I said, this is against the AI who uh, starts firing right now. Um, you can have one v one in some human uh, opponents. You can have two v twos. Pretty cool. You can set up siege battles, so you can um, have some really really custom experiences. Um, within the game depending on what you want to do, Dragon what you want to practice, princess. what you're interested in. So it would also be useful to note here, I mean I'm not really doing anything tactical here in terms of showing you different things, but um, yes. each troop type does have different strengths and weaknesses. Some things are better against um, armour, some are heavily armoured. Mage here, what can Mage do? Um, some are better against large things, some are better against monsters. Um, loads and loads of differences, so it's really, really intricate um, in terms of... Yeah, I'm losing some of my boys are running away already. Um, so, uh, so loads of sort of things you can do differently tactically within the game. It makes it really, really intricate and really, really, certainly for, for me, really interesting. Um, I'm not going to play this whole battle. We'll concede defeat. We'll let the lizard men have that. Um, so that is, uh, once again, very briefly, we've not gone into much detail uh, how the multiplayer side of things works. So really good. Um, for me, the game has something for everyone. If you want the big sort of drawn out epic campaigns, it's got that for you. Um, if you want just to have drop in here and there for sort of 10, 20 minutes, have some battles, it's got that as well. Um, can be frustrating at times. Um, until you get better at it, and we'll go through sort of some common uh, mistakes that I made and lots of other people seem to make that I've played online against. Um, but once again, that is for a video in the future. So hopefully you find this useful. Hopefully it's inspired you to go away and buy the game um, because it's brilliant. Uh, you certainly won't regret it. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.